Yeah. So once again, Jake and Anna have made some pretty controversial statements on Twitter and on TYT that have landed them in the hot seat on Twitter. Um, here's one that we can play. I'm interested to get your reaction to this one. Zach Trump basically saying that, or sorry, Jake basically saying that Trump comes off as authentic and a populist when he demonizes trans athletes and plays into the right wing culture war on that front. So let's take a listen to his comments and we can react. Okay, and that what I just saw with my own eyes is not an anecdote. You the polling bears it out. Yeah, this is not a winning issue for us. It is what it is. You do what you want with that information. Well, the advocates and activists for the transgender community would respond with, "We don't care about the politics, right? We don't care." Okay, about but then they, but what, then don't come. No, 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 no. I gotta say, on. let me, let me okay. just finish my thought, Jake. For okay, one go second. ahead. Go okay, ahead. they'll say that, but okay, you don't care about the politics. Let's just for once in your life. Think strategically about what that means. As somebody who does a show for a living, normally if somebody cuts you off, you you let it slide. If you say, hey, bro, shut up, like that means you're pissed off. You are angry at that point. And the other person normally knows like, hey, I need to back off because I've stepped on their toes too many times out of wanting to say what I want to say, right? So I just think the friction level right there is a little, if, you, if you've never been on a show, if you're in that kind of a capacity with somebody you've worked with for that long, that means that there's a little bit of a something... I mean, I'm not trying to be the gossip guard, right? We try, uh, but this is, you know, uh, it, it feels like the tension's a little, little high. Like the temperature might be turned up a little bit in, uh, in the uh, studio uh, TYT. Also, just you know, this argument that Jenk starts off with that's like, oh, well, this isn't a popular issue. It's not polling well, so you know, do what you want with that information. Basically, implying that we should abandon that as a progressive movement and never talk about it. Um, did, I mean, how short is your memory, bro? I remember when Barack Obama was president and it still wasn't politically popular to be in favor of gay marriage. Obama literally ran against gay marriage in 2008. He said he was not in favor of legalizing gay marriage because it was not a quote unquote politically popular option. Does that mean at the same time in that, in that, you know, era that we should have been against legalizing gay marriage because not enough American people were on board with it yet because the polling wasn't quite in our favor yet? Of course not. No. And so many leftists and progressive activists held it down on that issue for years and years and years while it was unpopular to you know, champion that issue. And because of the work that they did as activists, because of the work that they did moving the needle, it eventually did become the politically popular position to hold. And I think in the same way, we'll see that happen with a lot of trans issues right now. A lot of people, uh, they still don't fully understand the trans experience. They might not know any trans people, but as it becomes more normalized and as more people experience other trans individuals and, you know, become friends with them and get to know them, I think that society's views on a lot of these subject matters will change in favor of the trans movement and in favor of trans rights. Um, but it's just so anti-progressive to sit here and say, well, we got to give home or sorry, we got to give up and go home um, without even trying to change people's minds. We just got to accept the fact that it's always going to be like this and that the anti-trans activists win because there's more of them. That's ridiculous. And again, it's just the opposite of progressive. Oh, yeah. It's also incorrect to frame this as if it's some issue that's going to be like the vote determiner it's like well guys i really want medicare for all i really want to be able to afford my rent and groceries i really don't want to die from climate change i'd rather see you know improved roads than military bases abroad but at the university of pennsylvania last month there was a swim meeting and i just I can in good conscience sign off on the fact that it was the most fair competition, guys. So which politician am I going to go with? The one that really wants to regulate collegiate female swim teams. All right, I know it's a tough one. I, I care deeply about that issue. It's no pet issue. Uh, or, you know, revigorating the American health care system. Ending the wars in the Middle East. <laughs> The list goes on and on. Green New Deal. You guys know the laundry list of progressive policies. Uh, but, you know, if you're a massive turf and you want to decide that you're going to vote for the one crazy person that hates trans people instead of all of that other shit, then you were never part of the movement to begin with. Uh, and I don't care about your vote. That means that you're going to continue pushing the Democratic Party to unequivocally support everything that the trans activists want, even if it's unpopular among the electorate. That means they're not getting reelected. That means they're gonna lose to Republicans. Republican lawmakers who are 
passing draconian, disgusting legislation in various states right now as we speak against the transgender community. So how does that make you win exactly? No, that is incredibly selfish of activists who are betraying their own community. Because when you say I don't care about elections, who cares about the Democrats? That isn't the point. The Republicans introduced over 600 bills against the LGBTQ community. That's because of elections and over 70 of them have already passed. When you say I don't care about winning and I don't care about elections, what you're saying is I'm super selfish leftist activist and I'd like to build my cloud. But meanwhile, I'm willing to throw trans people and the entire LGBTQ community under the bus, knowing that these bills are gonna yeah, supporting trans people and their rights is actually throwing them under the bus. And also, who are these lawmakers? Who are these politicians who are running on the issue of trans women in sports? I mean, there are certainly progressive, you know, politicians that support that that are very pro-trans people, like the squad members and stuff. But even they're not like running on these issues. It's not like they're making it their one of their top five or top ten talking points or something that's plastered all over their campaign literature or their websites or anything like that. They're not going out of their way to be like the most known for supporting the inclusion of trans, you know, women in sports or whatever the fuck. That's just something they happen to support. So I don't know what they're even suggesting here, uh, Jenkin and Anna. I don't I don't know if they're suggesting they just totally like bend the knee to conservatives and just adopt the conservative position on this or if they just never talk about it. like i don't know what the what the suggestion even is here well what it is is that they want their narrow version of progressive politics where it doesn't infringe on their lifestyle or worldview in any way to be the only acceptable form of progressive politics and we know rooted in jank's background as a conservative right his younger years he's rooted in a lot of weird archaic fucking like um, you know just old school conservative values republican values right uh you know he uh you know he's claimed that he you know uh, was like a reformed conservative and now he's a progressive but that's just you know sometimes the line cracks when he says things like oh like you know people are naturally bad you have to have laws to constrain them otherwise they will always be bad i'm like that's not how a progressive looks at the world dude you know where he's you know arguing with Hassan piker about how you know the boss actually does have value the owner does have value and that the, you know he's not just actually acting in a role of an extractor right and uh, all kinds. The list goes on and on and on, right? And what it really comes down to is that he is he he he's a self congratulating, uh, you know, NIMBY liberal who doesn't want to see people dying on the streets without health insurance as long as he you know can still have his own like private lifestyle. He's a complete gaslighter. That is a hundred percent true. And I feel bad for anybody uh, in his audience that is a you know queer person that has been a long time TYT listener that has watched them abandon you uh, in the middle of the most like fucking tumultuous part of this battle. Right. Imagine when it, if it became impossible. Imagine like how many critical moments in the civil rights movement. I don't want to like. I, I know that it's not a perfect analogy, guys. I and I know that some people get very like worked up about, and I can see reasons for that. But I, I just think that for an important, you know, moment right here, there were so many critical moments in the civil rights movement where it got real bad and it got really ugly. Imagine. And yes, there are plenty of examples of of white people who turned their back on black people when the, when when it started to get real hot in the kitchen, uh, as you will, when they started to really crack down on the protests. Uh, for sure, there were people that uh, folded, people that crumbled, right? Um, but you don't want to be one of those people. You don't. We we know what is just and what is correct, right? And that's a world where everybody gets to literally be themselves and not be subject to persecution. And it's so fucking almost ridiculous to say that. It's almost ridiculous to say that because it should just be common fucking sense, but it's not. Uh, and for some reason, Jenks archaic mind thinks that you know, oh, you know what? This entire culture war uh, that is meant to have like it's like a final grasp at restraining american you know life and, and and keeping it that you know quaker fucking puritanical old school kind of a deal this is the same shit when they made you know men you know get drafted into the army and shave their fucking heads because they were all long hair we needed you know a, a, a good war to clean these boys up uh you know uh that's not actual american history but you know it's fun to think about that way <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, I'm on a really big hill here. What I'm saying is that fuck Jen Kuger. He wants to be a rich liberal uh, that feels good about himself, right? Uh, that feels good about himself, uh, but still looks down on people, uh, you know, still detests the, you know, uh, it, it, there's actually a great quote by uh, Chris Hedges. I don't know if he's appropriating it from somewhere else, uh, but he's like, uh, but he says that, uh, you know, when he says uh, people love the poor, but they don't love the smell of the poor. Uh, and, and that's the energy that uh, Jen Kuger gives off. Straight up. Also, uh, shout out to you, Adrian. Um, I'm a non-binary and mod for TYT. I've donated two years of my life to them, and this hurts. Wow. I mean, that's just so sad. And I, I think about people like you, Adrian, people in the TYT community that I know are trans or non-binary, um, as well as some people that literally work for TYT. I think they have a commentator that is trans or non-binary that's on the show sometimes. Um, and I just think about how that must affect like people like yourself, Adrian, um, that have looked up to Jink and Anna because of their progressive positions for all these years. And now just to see themselves kind of thrown under their bus, their community kind of thrown under the bus seemingly um, because these positions aren't polling quite high enough for them to be worth fighting for, I guess. Um, and, and again, I just don't understand that because you could say that about so many progressive positions before they got popular. A lot of progressive positions like Medicare for all example, luckily have become the actual populist position, like a majority of Americans support them. But of course, as it is with any progressive social issue, there's always going to be a deficit at, force, at first with the population where it takes a little bit of convincing. It takes a little bit of normalizing. And that's what we're in the middle of doing right now with the, the trans community and the trans experience. It's being normalized. Um, people are learning to have to live with it that aren't used to it. Um, and that's why we see this massive backlash from the right wing. That's why we see all of this reactionary insanity, these fake moral panics that are being ginned up against the LGBT community. Um, it's a reaction to that progress, to that societal change. And it's just really a bummer to see Jink and Anna kind of hop on board with that. Or I mean, not straight up hop on board with that. Obviously, they're not going out here saying fuck trans people or whatever. But still, to see them kind of uh, uh, throw the trans movement under the bus because it's not quite politically popular enough to be on this side yet. It's just really disappointing. Go again, on the Daily not, Wire and give them ammunition. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's ex that's what Anna did a couple months ago. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not like all those crazy lefties, you know, that, that want trans women in sports and stuff. So you know, super disappointing. And like I said, it's just the opposite of being a progressive. Being a progressive means standing up bravely and saying, "Yeah, I don't give a fuck if 20% of the country agrees with me. This is the right thing, and I support it as a progressive. That's why I'm a progressive, not a regressive." right that's kind of the definition 100 percent, and also no roman in my opinion no trans issues are not a deciding factor for voters unless you're absolutely fucking crazy i could not imagine why you would decide that that is the issue that you were going to focus on out of every single problem going on in our society so maybe for fringe right-wingers but on for for democrats no i i don't think it's a deciding factor gavin do you no, I mean, unless you're literally trans, uh, in which case, yeah, it might influence your the way you vote. Um, but no, I don't think it is. I really don't think it is. Um, and I think that's actually part of the reason why a lot of the Republicans did so poorly in the recent midterms. It's because they made trans issues and this fake moral panic over trans folks. They made it central to their campaigns. They made it central to their agendas. And it's like, unfortunately, you know, that's just not an issue that matters to most people. It's just simply not something that the majority of hardworking, working class people care enough about to motivate them to go to the polls. Like we live in Missouri. I remember seeing ads on TV for Republican candidates running for the Senate talking about trans women in sports. I'm like, you're literally running for the United States Senate and to represent Missouri, a, a, a state with a myriad of fucking issues. Um, do you really think that this is what you should be devoting entire commercials to this issue that affects like a fraction of the percentage of the population do you really think this is what's going to motivate people to come out and vote for you as if this is going to make their lives better no it, it's not it's it's ridiculous and it's really just this online brain rot which has convinced a lot of conservative politicians that because that's what people on the online right are obsessing over that that's what everyone cares about but it's it's simply not true yeah it, it was so bad that they even got the inevitable, very uninspiring uh, Nicole Galloway not that long ago. I do you remember when she was running for uh, Senate uh, and she also started parroting a bunch of turf shit. And it was just like, just to respond, she was like, don't worry, guys. I also hate the truth. And it was just like, why are you talking? Why are you? Why are you now? No, now I'm not going to fucking vote for you. Uh, you know, 
Um, anyway, so. Right. So let's finish out this TYT clip real quick. A pass because we're laser focused on a losing issue. And by the way, you schmucks, you're falling exactly into the right wing trap. The Republicans. Also, ran for governor, by the oh, way, I said senator. Uh, I realized I was wrong when I. Right. I do remember she was a terrible candidate. Just ran against it. Parsons and Parsons beat her. Right. Right. Either way. Um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought here, actually. Uh, I was just the bad co-host right there where a <laughs> was trying to get a thought out, and I had to run a correction really quick because I was like, I just called that lady a senator, too, but she didn't run for Senate. That was Lucas Kuntz in that primary, and then, you know, that now Lucas Kuntz lost to uh, Bar uh, Barbara Bush Valentine. Anyway, I had to work it all throughout of my brain, and then Gavin lost his train of thought. I'm hoping that I gave him enough time to uh, fucking rewind and yeah, so Jenk is saying that progressives and leftists are laser-focused on this issue, but again, I will remind Jenk that Actually, that's not even true. It's the right wing that is laser focused on this issue. It's the right wing, which is frothing at the mouth, fomenting this fake moral panic over these issues. And it's us progressives, us leftists who are just kind of like responding, being like, actually, trans people do deserve rights. Trans people do deserve to participate in society. But outside of a, a small group of literal trans activists, people who's activism is actually centered on trans rights probably because they are part of that community outside of that group of activists who of course have the right to fucking advocate for their own rights by the way out, outside of that right i don't think anyone's laser focused on it we're just responding to the bigoted talking points that are being pushed by the right wing right now yep because we're laser focused on a losing issue and by the way you schmucks you're falling exactly into the right wing trap. The Republicans, they tried everything. They tried anti-gay stuff, it didn't work. They tried trans bathrooms, you remember that? Mm -hmm. That didn't work. Trans, kicking the transgender community out of the military, that didn't work. They drilled and drilled and drilled in until they finally found a little tiny nugget of like, hey, trans folks in like competitive sports seems a little bit much. And you don't engage them in that fight. They lose on everything else. But Idiot activist. Yes, I just called you an idiot. Activists go in there and go, no, I'm going to fall right into that trap. So there we have it. Um, that's the commentary from Jake and Anna on the trans sports issues, which got a lot of people pretty pissed off. Um, and yeah, I don't think that Trump comes off as authentic and a populist when he demonizes trans athletes. I mean, if, if someone wants to have a respectful difference of opinion on me or Zach or, you know, the trans activist community on that subject matter. I think there's a way to do that. That's polite. That's reasonable. Um, but Trump just being a bigot and demonizing a community of marginalized people is not authentic. And it's not even really populist either. It's just him being the demagogue that he is and scapegoating marginalized people like he always does. Um, and I don't think we have to like give him credit for that or act like somehow that's a winning strategy that we need to also emulate or at least shut up about. I don't buy into that. No, that's the caricature that they create of populism to make us afraid, right? That it's just a bunch of hateful fucking, yeah. you know, uh, barbarians that want to discriminate, right? And it's mob rule and anybody who's different than us will be ostracized and unprotected by society. They are literally creating a caricature of populism that will be used uh, in the straw man that they set on fire. Uh, when they beat us in the next election. Uh, and and, and uh, as far as him making it on every issue, I, every single fucking Midwest, swing state, Senate bullshit candidate, governor candidate, remember Barbara Bollier in fucking Kansas? That was a senator. Uh, she fucking lost. Uh, literally the same person as Nicole Galloway. I'm pretty sure Barbara Bollier was like a physician or something like that. Something like that. Anyway, and she was like, she she was at one point a Republican, but then she ran as a Democrat. That's the kind of people that they run over here. Uh, and guess what? They're not woke. Uh, so that's not the problem uh, about the middle of America that you think it is from all the way over there in your fucking castle in Los Angeles where you never fucking get out because you don't want to see any peasants or fucking homeless people. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jesus Christ, it makes me crazy. Yep, 100%, 100%.